do 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 what's up sons it's blind run with son of attack once again and welcome back to another talking head video today we're going to be taking a look at mev geth specifically the reorg time bandit stuff that's going on that this guy edgar is threatening after you know hasu had to be all uppity Look, there's a lot of drama going on here. Is this going to be a threat? Should the users of Ethereum be concerned about it? Let's get into it right after a word from our sponsor. At this point, most of you should be familiar with today's sponsor, Prime XBT. As such, they want me to take this time to provide a short update on the Prime XBT platform. If you remember, they have a fantastic copy trading module where you can follow the strategies of established traders. There has been massive volatility in the market recently, but you can find traders that make money on both sides of the market and follow their strategies. It doesn't matter if the market is going up or down, there are always opportunities. Pay attention to the descriptors. For example, if the word short is contained within the name, it's likely the trader is on the bearish side of the market. And during a falling market, it's better to follow a strategy where the trader leans towards trading bear markets. Register an account with Prime XBT, take a look and do your own research. The platform contains many statistics to help determine which trader suits your style, but ultimately it's your decision on how you invest. Remember, any form of investing comes with significant risks, so do your own research. Use promo code SONOFATECH at sign up for a 50% bonus. Okay, so welcome back. We're going to hop right into the tweet that kind of ignited all this so you guys get an idea of why this is happening. And it came from Edgar, who, to my knowledge, uh, does work with Flashbots. Anyways, so now with the issues of paying for reorgs, we have the first real example of destabilizing consensus. Should I release a cut of MEV Geth that does this? Magician of chaos shit. <laughs> Woo! And basically what ended up happening is Hasu replied uh, and said, basically, if this was your real motivation, you'd let Ethermine do it once and then get wiped off the face of the planet Earth because they lose all of their hash power. As it stands, I think you're only interested in your own profit. I mean, Hasu's got a blind spot here, just like pretty much all the core devs and everybody that's involved in ETH that isn't a miner. Uh, you forgot that you pretty much abandoned all the miners at this point, including Ethermine, right? Uh, and this is where we really get into that whole philosophical debate of like, if Edgar did release this software for mining pools, would mining pools adopt it? And it's somewhere between, yes, might as well make the extra revenue off of this particular you know, piece of software via mining before, you know, mining is done. And uh, the other parts are like, nobody wants to tank it because the pools are also going to be moving to ETH2 and staking. I don't know where y'all are at in that kind of thought process. Let me know in the comment section below because I'm hearing crazy, crazy arguments from both sides that are very strong headed. And to me, it would just make sense that if the rewards are high enough, uh, quoting Mean Hash on Twitter, if the rewards are high enough, somebody's going to do it. And there is no, you know, <laughs> there's no guarantee that the mining pools would just basically lose their hash power. That, there, that, that's not... You aren't going to implement something that has a potentially a reward upside and then have them lose hash power. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I think this is very short sighted and he's talking shit when I don't think that it's a good argument. Anyways, whew, this is, this is a lot guys. This is a lot. So, all right, there we go. So anyways, this goes on for a while, but let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, what it does and try to give you guys the best ideas on how this functions. So it dropped on GitHub yesterday, as you may have been wondering, what is it? And that is this MEV Reorg Bandit Geth. I think he has a different option as well here. Anyways, 
uh, it was renamed. Here you go. So MEV is minor extractable value. We've talked about this before. It got kind of changed from maximal extracted value. It's not just done by miners. And then typically is done in the coming block. A miner says, uh, like ethermine.org, can choose how to sequence the block if they find the nonce. And then, but what if you could go back in time? So you can with blockchains if you have the right tools. Uh, here the tip of the chain is reorg to a sequence transactions favorably to miners in what is called a time bandit attack. Time bandit subsidized short-term reorgs through the additional MEV found. You can, uh, you find additional MEV because you know what the future transactions look like. To date, it's been an area miners and others have not been willing to go to because it would hurt Ethereum's consensus and therefore its assets. But with proof of stake coming to Ethereum, what the miners have to lose? And so that is really, that's, that's what we were talking about. That's the crux, right? This is more of a practical overview of what's going on here, which is there is essentially something that can reorganize the blocks in the past. And if that's true, miners in the past haven't wanted to implement it because it would hurt their own investments against their own best interest. But with Ethereum implementing things like 1559 directly impacting and attacking miners and their profitability, along with the merge coming up, the argument would be that miners would go ahead and go through with it because what do they have to lose at this point? There's only a few months left for mining Ethereum as it stands. So there you go. Now, Bunny Girl on Twitter also is talking about this and she basically announced the request for reorg contract, uh, which RFR contract uh, creates a mechanism that allows users to pay miners to reorg the Ethereum blockchain. So what you need to know from this one is the example is um, the $40 million Binance hack. What if Binance wanted to pay out a bounty to miners for reorging the chain? to exclude the hack, hacker's transactions. They could pay out lower amount than the hack, e.g. 10 million, and pay it out to the miners to basically remove all of the hacked transactions. This is dangerous. Do you understand what that means? We're starting to play with the public ledger. We're starting to cross things out and replace them. This is not good. This is why people are worried about what is going on in particular here. It means that you basically destabilize the entire consensus mechanism for Ethereum and Ethereum as a result would go away if this is possible. So let's talk about if it's possible. Here's all I have so far. What we have is essentially a GitHub from Mr. Edgar and he has been posting updates. It is not gibberish. Uh, there is code in here in all of the updates look for like the newest ones and then if fx factorial modified it then you know that's his this is of course uh mev geth and then just a fork of it and then you bring it over here and and this is you can add to it essentially so in the github for those who are not familiar with github so there's definitely commits being made um now i am not well versed enough in either you know solidity or necessarily like uh, mev geth here at this point at least from a code perspective all i can tell you is that there is work being done just because i'm familiar with github and so it really depends on if this can be implemented or if this can actually be done first so there's two things that have to happen for this to go through one this has to get done meaning that somebody actually has to get the code out which is what edgar is doing which is what he threatened to do then a mining pool would have to implement it so ethermine.org hive on pool flex pool whoever it may be they would have to implement it and then on top of that miners would have to choose to mine to the pool that's implemented it so three steps right the code actually has to work just to clarify with you guys again, 
a pool has to decide to implement it and the miners on that pool have to agree that they want to go through with it. If all three of those things are true, then it completely destabilizes the consensus process for Ethereum. And in turn would technically tank it because if you can rewrite transactions, you know, in the past, I just don't think that, uh, I don't think that that's good necessarily. Now, what I found funny is like Bunny Girl kind of like is proposing it as like, you know, a good thing to be able to reorganize and get rid of hacks and so on. I'm not sure I agree with that, but that was also just an example. It's kind of a thought process here at this point. Anyways, I'll leave all the links down in the description below. Think of it as MEV in time. Turtles in time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can watch more by clicking this playlist up here or go ahead and subscribe.